Hello everyone, George here, Catholic Positive Energy. Nice to see everyone. Uh, sorry I couldn't broadcast yesterday on Tuesday. I was busy doing school work the whole day. I, I certainly try really hard to still be able to come to you guys. I'm starting to think maybe I should just stick to Wednesdays. Let me know if you feel that way, if you are okay with me coming on Wednesday mornings, Pacific time. Let me know. Anyways, <clears throat> now the name of this broadcast is All Good Things Happen in God's Time. Now, what do I mean by that? Now, hopefully, the majority of you watching here are believers. This is a Catholic positive community. So, obviously, I'm a believer, as you already know. Now, <clears throat> let me expand on this. Now, all of us, we want good things to happen to us in our lives. There's, there are some good things that may not have happened to us yet that we want. Like maybe you want to find that right person, that wonderful spouse that you haven't found yet. Maybe you want to have children, you don't have children yet. Maybe you want to win the lottery, you haven't won the lottery yet. I, and you're gonna love this. Now I, I play the lottery. I certainly try to win. Four years ago, this month, I won a car at a car raffle at church. Some of you have heard me talk about that. That happened September 16th, 2018. So yeah, this Friday will be the four year anniversary. And I still have that car. And as far as I'm concerned, I'm gonna keep that car until it's no longer able to be used. It has a very special value in my heart. Now, when I won that car, I wasn't expecting that to happen at all. And, and it's good that I'm now steering down this direction. I'll get to the point. Just bear with me, please. Now, <clears throat> I remember before I won my car, I wasn't expecting this to happen at all. Uh, somebody tuned in to watch. I'm, wow, I, I'm sorry. I don't know how to pronounce your name. Uh, well, I'm glad you're here. <laughs> If I see somebody has a very big fancy name and I have no idea how to pronounce, I just choose not to for fear that I might mispronounce and upset someone. You know, I don't like it when people mispronounce my last name, Good said, and it's so easy to get, but my teachers never got it right. So I just, I, I, I just choose not to. Hopefully the person will tell me the right pronunciation and then I'll go from there. Anyways, before I won my car, I was not very happy with my life the way it was. And uh, the reason for that is I had a different car back then and I had a car payment that was just draining me every month. I, I didn't like having a car payment. And back then I wasn't a homeowner yet. So I was still living in this uh, apartment, which was, uh, it wasn't in a very good neighborhood. and. I was working a job that was always making me exhausted. I was working graveyard, lots of overtime. Lots of times I'd work six days a week and only have one day off. <clears throat> and I really wanted to become a homeowner. I wanted that car payment to just go away entirely. And I was praying for better things to happen. Now. I remember also during that time, right before I won my car, I was working a lot of overtime and I, I had a lot of nice, long, meaningful conversations with my best friend, Jim. And I was whining a lot and complaining a lot about how I didn't like it that my life was where it was back then. And after uh, several weeks, through a bizarre turn of events, now we had a car raffle at church to raise money for our building fund. And yet yeah, they are building the church and they're almost done now. So I bought just one book of 12 tickets. It was a hundred bucks. And I was positive that I was not going to win because at that church we had had several car raffles over the years. I bought some tickets and I never won. And I always noticed that most of the time, most of the people who won were people who were worse off than I was, who didn't even have a car, who had next to nothing. <clears throat> and so this was in 2018. I 
I remember the day very well. Now, I remember exactly where I was when the drawing happened. Now, uh, where I was working at the time, I was very dear friends with one of my coworkers. He was one of my best friends at that time. I would always go to work, this was on a Sunday night. I would always go to work an hour early just to hang out with him. And so when, when I would hang out with him, now apparently something else happened and I didn't even know this until the next morning. All right, I found out the next day because there was a voicemail on my phone and it was from the church. And I thought to myself, now wait a minute, I haven't been there in two weeks because I was every other week I was going to mass at another parish where I was singing in, in the choir at the time. So I thought to myself, why is the church calling me? All right, there's only two possible reasons. Either I won the car because the car raffle was the day before. Either I won the car or I'm in trouble. But I haven't been to that church in two weeks, so I know I'm not in trouble. So, after I hear the voicemail, and I'm in a lot of shock. Now, I, I wasn't fully aware of what happened. I thought maybe I won the car, but I really doubt that. So, I, I call back, and uh, yeah, the person who uh, left the message, uh, she answered the phone, and I'm kind of half asleep, half awake, because I just woke up after a, a long, exhausting night of working graveyard. And so, I go... Uh, she answers the phone and I said and I'm like this I'm like oh, so did I win the car and she says to me with a big smile on her face she said you didn't even let me finish yes you did <laughs> and then I'm just exploding with joy and shock because I wasn't expecting that at all now I wasn't praying for that to happen I, I never prayed oh lord please help me win the car I never did that <clears throat> okay because I didn't think it would help me but and, and I remember as soon as I got off the phone with her I, I just jumped out of my room and my mom and dad were right there and th they, they could hear me a little bit they thought I was happy for a different reason I was trying to get a better job at the time but uh, then when I told them that I won the car dad was completely speechless and was in total shock and uh, my mom and I were, uh, you know, she embraced me, we hugged, and we were jumping up and down several times. It was the happiest day of my life so far. So when that happened, and I won that car, here, here were some good things that followed immediately after that as a result of that, that I was not expecting and I wasn't prepared for, okay? I won that car, so, I got rid of the other car, the one I had a car payment on, sold it, got rid of the car payment, and then uh, five months after I won the car, I bought this house that you see me inside right now. It was a lot easier for me to buy a house because I did not have a car payment anymore. My life was a lot more steady and stable. And things were wonderful. I wasn't expecting this to happen at all, not at all. And because these wonderful things happened in my life, I won a car, I get rid of a, a previous car, get rid of the car payment, get a house. These good things just kept piling up on top of each other. And I wasn't expecting any of this at all. I was in total shock. All of my dear friends were very, very happy for me. And I remember my best friend Jim even said to me, you know, you were so unhappy for so long because of your living situation, your financial situation back then, but now I can see that you're so much happier. You've made your life a lot better, obviously by the grace of God, and God gets all the credit. Don't give me the credit. God gets the credit. I was able to, like I say, get rid of the other car, continue to work hard, maintain having this house. I've been in this house for three and a half years now. And... I was just so much happier because the things that I didn't want anymore in my life were no longer there. I actually got what I wanted. I got a house. I got rid of the car payment. 
So my point is, okay, now here's the point. You have to hear the story first. My point is those things, all of these good, wonderful things happened in my life because of God's time. It happened when God wanted it to happen. Now, I'm sure a lot of you, life isn't perfect. I'm sure most of you watching, you might have problems or inconveniences happening in your lives, things that you wish would come to an end and more good things would happen like what I just described to you, what happened in my life. All of you would love for that to happen, but it doesn't always happen when we want it to happen. It happens when God wants it to happen. Amen? That's right. So definitely continue to have faith, to be rootly disciplined in prayer. Never lose faith. Never lose hope. Never have doubts. Never be pessimistic. Never be angry with God or upset with God or disappointed with God. Never, ever. Okay? Now, we're not always going to have everything we want. I still don't have everything I want, but I have the necessities. I have a house, very beautiful house. I have a very nice car with no car payment. I'm not saying this to show off. I'm just telling you what's going on. Yeah, I don't want people to be like, okay, rub it in, George. That's not what I'm doing, okay? I don't do that to people maybe jokingly, but they always know it. Anyways, I have the necessities and I have a lot of wonderful things in my life that I did not have before I told you all this. So remember, good things happen in God's time. And if you look at scripture, you will even see in Isaiah 55 verse eight, Isaiah says under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, and this is God talking, for my ways are not always your ways. Now, just because we want something and we have good intentions and, or maybe we want something good to happen to another person we know and love, it doesn't always happen just because we want it to happen. It doesn't happen because we feel like we deserve that to happen or they deserve that to happen. It happens in God's time. And God loves us. God always has a plan and always has it covered. And having told you uh, this story of mine i will tell you that now yes i most certainly believe in miracles i do believe in miracles and i truly believe that i can and will win the lottery one day as long as i stay focused and keep playing responsibly that is and any of you could accomplish winning the lottery yourselves please don't have doubts it can happen to anyone any of you any of us now Here's another thing uh, uh, I love to tell uh, about this story of me winning the car. Now, let's say if one of you watching, now that you've heard this story, let's say you, you uh, had a time machine. Now, if you would have went back in time to 2018 before I won my car, let's say you visited me a month before I won my car. Let's say you went to August 2018 and you found me and you told me truthfully George, next month you're going to win a car. And in, and in six months from now, you're going to be a homeowner. Now, if you would have said that to me back then, four years ago, I would have been trying to cast a demon out of you. I wouldn't have believed you at all. I wouldn't have believed one word that came out of your mouth. I would have thought, oh, yeah, right. I would have had doubts. But you would have been telling the truth. Here's my point. Never... Be doubtful. I understand, you know, I mean, as far as someone predicting the future, you may have doubts about those things. But never lose faith, never lose sight, never lose hope. Always put God first. Always believe in God. And always know that no matter what happens in your life, God has a plan and God will take care of you. So, like I say, Good things do happen to us. Whether we're praying for them or not, still continue to pray. Good things happen in God's time. And I will say this, I won't go into a whole lot of detail. There are some good things that haven't happened in my life yet that I would love to happen, but they haven't happened. But I know they will happen in God's time. I've had some very close friends saying, you're going through something right now, George, and I know that you want things to be better, 
but they haven't happened yet. And remember that they happen in God's time. I also want to share some other stories that I know. Uh, I used to be very dear friends with this married couple, but I mean, our lives have gone in separate directions now. And uh, I know that uh, this young married couple, they eagerly wanted to have children, but it took them a little while. Uh, you know, it didn't happen right away, uh, but eventually it did. But I remember even before they, they got the news that she was pregnant, I remember that um, they both said to me, and this was something, I was much younger back then. I remember they said to me, whenever God wants. Now, I don't hear too many young people say that. I hear older people say that, but not younger people. Whenever God wants. So, and this is something that I'm still trying to live by and be disciplined in myself. Whenever God wants. You see, that is not a selfish thing to say or feel at all, whenever God wants, because you need to realize something. Now, uh, hopefully you, you've heard of uh, a Catholic bishop who, he, he also has a, a ministry called Word on Fire Ministries, Bishop Robert Barron. He's also the Bishop of Winona, Winona Rochester in Minnesota. Okay, I have a friend watching, Brenda Tia. Nice to see you, welcome. Like I said, I'm not, I wasn't able to pronounce the person above you their name, but I'm glad that you're both here and you're both watching. Welcome. Now, Bishop Robert Barron has uh, said, and I've heard him say this in, in several talks that I, that I see, just look him up on YouTube, you, you'll see million, millions of things. Bishop Robert Barron, word on fire. One of the things that I remember he has said, I'll, I'll say all three. Number one, God is at the center. Number two, know that you're a sinner. And number three, realize that your life is not about you. God is at the center. Know that you're a sinner and realize that your life is not about you. Now, as I was just saying a few seconds ago, you know, uh, my, my friend said, oh yeah, they'll, they'll have a family and, and you know she'll get pregnant whenever God wants. It's not gonna happen just because they're trying. Now, most people, is, you, the way we are, even people in church, like, you know, we want something, we want it now. You know, and, 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 and obviously whatever it is that you want, you have good intentions. Hopefully they're not really selfish ones. But to realize and to know that they'll happen when God wants it to happen. A lot of times we, we get impatient and we try to force things to happen a lot quicker. But we need to realize that these things happen in God's time. Okay, Good things happen in God's time. Many of us are very impatient and we want things to happen quicker. Right now, right now, you know. They happen in God's time. And sometimes you may have to wait a while and you may not realize it yet. Let's say your life is not in a good place. Just realize the good thing that you want, the good thing that you need, it hasn't happened yet. You know, I mean, even for me, there are still some good things that I want and need, but they haven't happened yet. They will happen eventually, I know it. Because, I mean, I've been around a while to know that you know, when I wanted something really good to happen in my life, it eventually happened a little further down the road. It could happen next month. It could happen tomorrow. But whether it does or not, don't let yourself be a wreck or fall apart just because it hasn't happened yet. My friend Gene Loga is watching. Nice to see you here, Gene. I hope you also watched from the very beginning. Uh, Good things happen in God's time. Now, it's okay for us to want the good things to happen that haven't happened yet. It's okay for us to pray for things to happen that may not have happened yet. Okay? It's totally fine. Just realize that they will happen in God's time. And I would certainly like to ask all of you to please continue to pray for me 
please never stop. I will always be asking all of you for prayers. And I certainly will be praying for all of you. And just know, these good things that you want to happen to, uh, to you or to the people you love, they will happen in God's time. God's got it all covered. Never lose faith. Never lose hope. Never lose sight. Always think positive. And always remember, even if your life feels like it's really dark, remember the light is just at the end of the tunnel. It's not pitch black. It's not pitch black. So remember all of that. And uh, that concludes my topic for now. Just want to say a few things before I sign off. Now we have, as of this broadcast, we, we have 39 YouTube subscribers. Definitely want to see 40. Uh, late next week, I'm going to be at the Catholic Answers National Conference in the, the San Diego area, La Jolla. And I always meet people all the time, and you know I'm sure that I'll meet some nice people who will subscribe to my YouTube channel. For those of you watching, if you have not yet, please do. I would love to make it to 40, hopefully maybe make it to a million, but it will happen in God's time, yes, I know. So, uh, also, yes, I'm, I'm continuing to see a lot more interaction and growth here in the Catholic Positive Energy community on Facebook. So I'm very glad that I have some wonderful people like all of you here who are looking for something, for some sort of positive energy, hope, faith-based, centered around God, and obviously around positive energy. And this is what I totally try to provide here. This is one of the things I'm very passionate about. So it, it just makes me happy when I continue to see people here who are just really, really happy and always excited to be here. and. Uh, I'm going to name the people who I see most who interact with me regularly. Please forgive me if I don't say your name. It's nothing personal. I love every single one of you. The ones who normally interact with me regularly, people like Jean Loga, Brenda Tia, Cheryl Mostacho, Karen Cornoyer. I'm very happy that all of you are here. I, I know that uh, we have like about 400 people who like the uh, Facebook page, so obviously I can't name every single one. I don't even have all of them memorized. I'm just naming the people who interact with me regularly, who are always commenting and always, like, uh, you know, interacting with me regularly. I tend to remember them first. But even for those of you who may not interact with me, but hopefully you still watch the broadcasts, I'm very glad to have you here as well. And. I would love to see a lot more interaction and more growth, especially on the YouTube channel. So remember, good things happen in God's time, not in our time. Give God the credit, because God deserves all the credit. So let's continue to pray for each other, and we will have a meditation and prayer broadcast next week. I will say... I have gotten some feedback from some of my super fans who I just mentioned that I guess they like it when I do the meditation first and the prayer last rather than the prayer first and the meditation last. Please let me know and I'll continue to post more uh, postings asking people if that's what they want, if that's what they like better. I'll totally do that if I see that that's what you want to say yay or nay. So that's what we're going to have next week. So until next week, remember, good things happen in God's time, not in our time. Remember that. Amen. God bless. And please remember, dignification is better than criticism.